Once we understood what is inheritance, now let's try to focus on init and super method in this video. So before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the methods from here or maybe just skip F1 there. And let's remove B class. Let's remove all this stuff. So we got away Simba class here, which is A in which you got this function called F1 and we are printing F1 works. It always works. And let me move to my folder and let's run this. Let's see what happens. It will not do anything. It's just that uh, print blank. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a object of A and let's say A and we can call F1. Okay. Now we can call F1, but apart from F1, of course, F1 we created, but then the moment I say dot, you can see there are so many methods which we can use. The question is, from where we are getting all these methods? And do they really work? They do work and they are part of class A. And then you will say how they are coming there. See, every class in Python like this, they are by default child class. And in your mind, you want to be thinking, it's a, it should be a parent class. Why child class? Maybe you made a mistake, Naveen. Uh, no, every class in Python is a child class. How? Every class in Python inherits a class called object. Even if you don't mention, this is a class object which it inherits. Okay. And this class has everything. Whatever you're getting, the suggestions, they are from this class. Okay. So by default, every class in Python inherits this class object. So even if you see it or not, it's there. And that's why you got all the option. But at this point, I just want to focus on F1. I just wanted to talk about the object class. And that's done. Let's run this. I don't know why I cleared when it was already clear. Habits. So you can see it says F1 works. Now I want to add a method here, which we have worked before, which is init. And in this, I'm going to print in a init. Okay. Now you tell me, if I run this, will it print in a init? And if you have seen the previous videos, you will say yes. And the answer is yes. It will print in a init. But let me just go towards inheritance now, which is create a class B. And in this class B, let's say I have these two things. And time being, let me comment out the init. And this should be F2. And this should be F2 works. Now, when I create object of A again, it still says in a init because we are creating the object of A and we are calling F1. But what happens when you create the object of B? Let's see. When you run this, it says you're not able to access F1 because I forgot to init. I wanted to, I forgot about it. Let's clear and run. You can see it says in A init and F1 works. Why it is calling init of A is because when you create the object of a child class, it will look for the init method if you defined it. And we are defining that in the A class. But what happens when you define that in the B class now? Let's see what happens. So let's clear and run. And it says in A because <laughs> we are printing in A. My bad. Uh, let's run this and it says in B in it. Now this time it is not calling this particular in it. It is just calling this in it. So it will call in it if you have defined it. So first it will search in its own class, which is B. If you don't find it there, it will look for the init in the A class. And that's why it was printing in A init before. And now it is printing in B init. That means it will call only one init, not both. But what if I want to call both? In this scenario, you can use something called a super method. Now, what is super? Super basically represents the object of a super class. Now, what is super class? See, we have talked about parent child. We can also name it as a super class and a subclass. We can also say it's a base class and derived class. Different naming conventions, but means the same thing. So super means it will create the object of a super class. Now with that object, I can call the init of the super class, which is this init. So we are calling this by default because that's what you are doing here. And then this will call the init of the A class. Let's see if that works and it works. You can see it says in A init and in B init. Now you can use this super method, which is object of a super class to call some other features of A as well. Example from F2, you can call F1, but not like this. Either you can say self.f1, even that works. It is not, okay, because we are not calling F. So let's call F2 so that it will call F1. And you can see it says F1 works and F2 works. So we are calling F2, which is this, but F1 is calling F1. 
So either you can use self or you can use super both works. Like this. So yeah, that's about init and super in the inheritance concept. See you in the next part.